Just had to drop the valve cover on to see how it's looking. It's all coming together. It's looking awesome. Got the new pulleys. K-Tune tensioner cover. K-Tune side mount. New water pump, new alternator. Now we're gonna be installing the intake manifold today and I also got the alternator bolts in. I got my junkyard bolts bag. Don't mind the mess here. So I found some clean ones, cleaned them up with some steel wool and I think they look pretty good. So let's get to it. So a quick note about the intake. This is for the PCV system. So the PCV valve would go right here and a tube would come up and go into this port. So I'm gonna be plugging this. And then this system right here is, from what I read online, is some type of heater system. It allows coolant to flow through and heat up the intake. But I'm gonna be plugging this, and then I'm gonna go to be replacing this, whatever this thing is, with this hybrid racing adapter, sensor adapter. So my coolant temp sensor is going to be going in here, I'm gonna grab that coolant temp sensor off of the D16 engine. That is what's going to power the coolant gauge in the dash. So we're also using a Honda intake manifold gasket, which prevents heat transfer or lessens the heat transfer from the engine into the intake manifold so you get a little bit colder air temps. So there we go. You know, I always got to clean everything up, but it's turned out pretty good. Uh, looks like, so I have a brand new thermostat to put in here. I have a brand new gasket somewhere for this. And then we need to put our heater pipe in too. I have a brand new heater pipe because the heater pipe on the JDM engines are different since it's right hand drive. So you need a left hand drive heater pipe. the left hand drive heater pipe. It's off of a 2005 Accord. I think a TS TSX one should work fine. So, yep, I just bought it now. Easily could get this from a junkyard too. And then this little gasket goes right on here. I'm gonna put a little WD-40 on it so it doesn't get pinched up. We got thermostat on, thermostat housing. We got our heater pipes ran. So now we can move on to tightening all these bolts up and then putting the rest of the intake on. It looks like I actually forgot a bolt here, so I'm gonna have to go in the bolt bag over there and find one before I put the intake on. This is the K-tuned coolant housing. The reason I bought this was because the JDM coolant housing for some reason didn't have this port for the heater hose. And I could have went to a junkyard and pulled one off in a cord, but I thought this was kind of reasonably priced for what it is. It's a really sweet piece and you don't have to worry about a gasket because it's got these little O-rings back there. So that should just go on there like that. 
And luckily it comes with some hardware because mine is pretty nasty. So we ran into a problem putting this coolant housing on. This isn't a coolant housing. I don't even know what to call this piece, but it doesn't go over these studs. And honestly, even if it did go over the studs, there'd be a bunch of gap and I would have to get some type of spacer or build up a bunch of washers. So I didn't want to have to do this, but we're going to have to heat these up, try to get them out. Hopefully I won't mess up the paint too much, but we'll give it a try. We got to take them out either way. Okay, so huge relief, that came out insanely easy. Didn't even need any heat, just popped it right out. What we do here is go back, 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 So there we go. We got our K-tuned. I mean, I guess this is like a cool one passage on here. A little disappointed this didn't sit flush, but I was tightening it and it just felt, it got so tight in there. I didn't want to strip it out or anything. It's just aluminum, so. But yeah, the hardware looks sweet in there. I guess there's nothing, I could have sworn the old one it had a something to bolt that on, so I might end up just cutting that off because it's just kind of like floating there. Uh, I'm going to take this out real quick, put the hybrid racing coolant sensor adapter in there, and then maybe we'll lay the fuel rail on just to see how it looks because we got a K-Twin fuel rail and I'm sure it's going to look absolutely awesome on there. So there we go, I got the coolant sensor adapter in there. Kind of pisses me off that it's sticking up like that. It looks like crap. I don't know why it doesn't sit flush. It feels absolutely horrible though. I tightened it so much the, uh, the whole stand started moving. So I don't want to strip it out or anything, but uh, it'll probably be fine in the car just looking down on it like that. Okay, so I got the map sensor right here. And as you can see, it's got this screw on there. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It's all boogered up from me taking it out. So the screw's all boogered up from me taking it out. So I got this sweet hardware from Lowe's. There's the part number. It's just in the metric bin. And uh, it's a great replacement for the screw. So take the screw out. And there we go. So as you can see, it looks a lot better than the screw there. I'm really happy with that. I was gonna stick the fuel rail on, but the fuel injectors need to be cleaned. And I don't know, I might just wait till we put it in the car to put that on. I still have to plug these because this is where the PCV went. I'm probably gonna try to find a little barb fitting in there, barb fitting for there, and then I'll just run it to a catch can. And then this is where that whole heater thing went over to here. So I can just plug that. And then this one down here, that'll be our vacuum. That's where we'll get all our vacuum. So I think that's it for tonight. Made some progress, it's starting to look more complete. We'll see you guys later. Okay, so for removing these unused fittings on the intake, I was able to pretty much just pull them right out with some pliers. So as you can see right here, it's a little mangled up from being pulled out with the pliers. And then I was able to thread the holes 
And in this one, this was the one that provided coolant to heat up the head is what I'm pretty sure it was for. Um, I was able to fill that hole with Honda Bond and put a bolt in it. And then for the other, the vacuum line at the top of this screenshot I have here, I was able to thread that hole with a tap from the hardware store and put a nice looking hex fitting in there. And I did put a little bit of Honda Bond around it just to make sure everything was sealed up. And for the throttle body, it was a somewhat similar process. For the throttle body, there was actually two coolant fittings where the IAC valve would mount. And there was one larger fitting on the top of the throttle body that I think was for a vacuum supply for something on the uh, OEM Accord engine where I got this throttle body from. Basically, though, the fittings were stuck in the throttle body, so I first had to cut them off. So as you can see here, this is after I cut off the fitting, so there's still part of it in that hole there. And then I had to drill out the hole, and I basically just had a drill and a tap kit, so then I could tap out the hole with threads. So this is both of those um, coolant fittings have now been removed, drilled, and tapped. So I was able to find some plugs for those from the hardware store, and just put those plugs right in there and I did that same process for the vacuum fitting on the top of the throttle body and this is how it turned out so you can kinda see there's no fittings hanging off the throttle body anymore I didn't really get a good shot but if you look closely you can see there is a fitting that's halfway screwed into the top where the vacuum line used to be and then there's a little fitting you can see at the bottom that's screwed into one of those coolant passages so it's not perfect, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It definitely looks a lot better. See you guys in the next video.